And one more finishing touch. Rubber ducky. Welcome back, everyone, for more Scrap Mechanic. As you see, I finished moving pretty much everything up there. This is kind of going to be my tools for now. And I've got my gas canister right there. I've also brought some more of the plating over. I have some do not enter signs. I went out and grabbed some more stuff. But, you know, I, it's still not done. And one of the things I want to do, one of the things that I really am hoping for in the game is automation around production of fuel. A uh, way to automate the collection through a vacuum pump like this for oil to be able to produce fuel. That's not happening right now. While I can go swimming around and I've done it for a long time, I decided I've got blocks. I've got heavier blocks. Why don't I try building an underwater car finally? And so I want to mention it was pointed out that I it had to have changed at some point recently. Maybe with the last update whenever that happened, but... Changing the piston speed fixed the problem of me ragdolling when I went up on the piston elevator, but not down. Even though the speeds it set at, I've set it higher and didn't have that ragdoll effect happen in the past. And now suddenly it happens at a certain point. So I don't know what's going on with that, why it changed, but I did turn the speed on the pistons down. So it takes longer to go up, but at least I'm not ragdolling every time. There we go. We got four... Wheels. I'm going to go with the big wheels for this one because I feel it's going to be a better setup in terms of the terrain. I also want to point out, you might notice there's a little bit less uh, greenery in the distance. And that is because I finally broke down and I don't like modding during early access personally because it adds more problems to an early access development stage of the game. But the fake trees, the remove fake trees mod was an absolute must. Just had to do it because there's just too much clutter in terms of vegetation that you cannot interact with. And this makes it look so much cleaner and just to me, ultimately so much better. So I'm going odd number of blocks because that works best for the seats. And I'm thinking what I'm actually going to do is because the idea is to drive it and pick up, hopefully, the uh oil as i'm driving i need to actually put my seat if i have any more seats i don't I, yeah i don't have any spare seats uh, i need to actually put it where it is towards the front at the very front uh, so i can kind of maybe drive along and just right click as i'm driving yeah this looks like it will sink pretty well i would expect so now how do i want to do the wheel? i might actually keep it where this sticks out more and the wheels can come off of this area right here towards the back because I'm going to have a lot of weight towards the back so I'm going to use the struts because I feel like maybe in the water it won't make such a big deal and plus I'm going to have extra weight to it so I need you know we need yeah some of these I do like this because you can't place the struts down directly on like the gear right there so it won't place on the bearing which honestly doesn't make much sense i mean it'll place to that the other one will place on the bearing it doesn't make sense so just to test it out i've got the scrap engine on there uh just because you know realistically the gas engine should not work without some kind of seal on it underwater so i'm going to bring it underwater i probably should have done this where it was a little bit better you know, proximity to normal land as opposed to right where I dive into the deeper areas. Yeah, I don't even hear it. The guy looks like he's trying to spin the wheel. Maybe it's just I don't have enough power. Uh, maybe it was just the wheel spinning because I was moving downwards. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. All right. Taking that back, and we're going to do an electric engine. All right, electric engine test. Oh, yeah, it does work. Okay, so I need to make another electric engine at some point for my cart. This is working. I mean, it's not the fastest thing, but I also don't have it turned up very high at the moment. Ah, oh, look at that. I'm tearing, tearing it up underwater. <laughs> oh, yeah, that works. All right. So I could drive around, I could pick up 
fuel or oil as I go around for producing fuel. I, it's just a matter of producing enough batteries in the end, which I've got plenty. I'm not really using the cart right now. Uh, it'd be great if I could just, you know, had a way to just crack that open too. Grab it like that. Like that. Oh, oh, no, no, no. That's one problem. All right, stop it. That's one problem with doing it like this is you might accidentally target the wrong thing and there's no protection against that. Honestly, the struts are kind of helpful in a way as far as the terrain, but not really that helpful. I've got, I'm going to, oh yeah, look at that. Even though I was looking at it, at the oil, it was trying to collect the seat again. So I decided to try inverting my seat downwards, which totally really shouldn't work uh, as far as like controlling it right. But maybe this way I'm not going to get like a targeting thing. Nope, it's still targeting it. Okay, that did work decently there, but right there I'm targeting. If I hit the, the rail, the little handlebar in the back, or anything close to that, it will take the seat up, and that's going to break the whole thing. Yeah, the, you know, suspension struts are not really helping. They're actually making things worse. That's just going to take some uh, practice and making sure I don't accidentally click the wrong way. And I'm just going to take these out, because that's not going to make a difference now. And I'll do something like that. That adds a little bit there. And then I can still put these the right side up back here, which will add a little bit more to it. There we go. Let's see, how does that help? Okay. Yeah, is that kick? Out of energy already. Well, that burned through energy a lot faster than this thing. Like that across and that should not be able to get out of there oh yeah look at that so now i have a way to transport some globes without having to uh slowly swim back holding it in front of me that's a pretty good height i'm not sure that's going to be all the way to you know above water level but it's a good height uh so now question is how can i make this work I take that block out. There we go. Put that. Can't say that block. Which does cause it to lean a little bit. You know, actually, just do this. That there. And up. Uh, helps if I put the right block type. Alright, so I guess that's the best way I'm going to get it to mount, because it won't mount lower. I'll do... I have to do these again. I wish you could do it in a way where it would not disconnect it like that every time. Because you have to go back and redo this every time. And I forgot to uh, add that to the seat. There we go. Boom! I'm in the water! Maybe not in the water now! Boom! Back in! Keep driving. And I added some lights in the back, of course, so it's visible. Not so much so I can see, but so if I'm looking for it in the dark, I can find it, you know, uh, underwater. I can see where it's at, and that's being stuck on something, or it's still too buoyant. Not far enough. Two matched pistons is not far enough. All right, so I've got a third one. Let's do number three. Perfect timing. Test. Almost. Almost. <laughs> my head's in the water. How am I catching my breath? My head's actually in the water. I'm breathing through my backpack. That's what it is. Turn the power down one notch. And it's not at all kicking up anymore. It's still not speedy. I would like it to be faster. But it seems I, that's not happening even with blocks of this weight level. Oh, yep, works. 
Now I have them set all at the fastest speed. Boom! And just that wobble of the pistons. Wiggle. Not bad way to get a view. I mean, if it was like, hey, I need to take a quick peek, see what's around me. Oh, yeah, there's some uh, spots over there to get, you know, some rock and metal. So, like, I need to go over there. That could be useful. We're going to go with a light blue, like those annoying, you know, headlights that people like to get that are just annoyingly bright and blue. You know, when it's right in your eyes, you know, the really irritating ones. We're going to do that. Irritate some globes. But technically, as long as it doesn't do exactly that, I could just drive it up onto the beach at the end of a harvesting session. Assuming that... Oh, okay, it's still too buoyant. Actually, I want to say that that floats downwards at a slower pace than my boat did at times. Okay, I'm taking these out. I'm hoping maybe lowering the center of mass might help. And now it... What? Okay, it just looked like the wheel was going to mount there incorrectly, but it was actually still mounting correctly. And my sound is glitching out. It keeps cutting off. Like... There's no sound to it. I should have a little gear type, ratchety type sound, and it's not doing anything. My sound just keeps randomly cutting out now that I'm working on doing stuff with the vehicle. It's been happening since that last update. Like, I'm not even getting anything from eating food, nothing. I have, the sound has glitched completely out now. So I guess uh, I need to save, back up my save, and reload. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. It's ugly okay I still get speed but I'm not like ramping up like that so let's see oh that's better yeah just throwing on the little half dome piece or quarter dome pieces helped uh this is probably not going to work very well but let's try it out anyway we <laughs> I'm still more buoyant than my boat was at times. I feel like I'm driving a beetle type tank and it's still floating up in the water. So on land is fine. In the water, it gets this little kick where it's like, oh wait, there's some water current, something causing pickup. And it makes me start to do that. Also, I lose the ability to turn. Apparently. Apparently, I just... With all this, I still don't have enough weight versus buoyancy for it to work. Crawl up onto the land on the little nearby real island, not just some rocks sticking up. It's the real island. And you see there is a spot where bots are spawning, which is why I did not want to use this for my base area because placing down... Uh, farming area, there would still be enough room for them to spawn in around it. Wouldn't give me that security that the other island does. Oh, hey, yeah, we're going to test this out. I don't know how well it will work when I do the lift on it, but we're going to see if I can carry him and use the lift to move him around too. Oh, well, that's a problem. He's, he's lifting up out of the spot when I just start driving. Yeah, that's... Like he's bouncing around. He bounces to the back and then he's bouncing up and out because of the way the vehicle's lifting like that. So uh, that will work. I just need some kind of cover to enclose it so he can't bounce out, I think. Drop there. Did it keep? It did not keep him in there. All right. So that's the problem is not going to let me transport one of the globes in it with the uh, jack, with the lift. So now for a good test run. I'm just going to drive. So if I go that way, it goes around that edge of the island. There's a building over there. You know what? I'm just going to drive in that direction. I'm going to take some extra batteries. I've got plenty. 
And I'm just going to drive off into that direction and see what I can find. Yeah, it's just still way too buoyant. It's almost like if there was real physics being treated, I would think of it being the flat surface on the underside of the side pieces. It seems to work better if I get going and don't let off the gas pedal. Or is it gas pedal if it's an electric engine? I put a globe in the back. I enclosed it like that. And what happened? He still popped out when I started moving. And you know what? It's the same as my other island. The same design it looks like. Or nearly an identical design. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Short little spot there to there. Come up around. Here will be my garden. Go around. It's the exact same island group. Yeah, because there's lower ones on this side that's facing towards where the repair, you know, the workshop is there. And we've got, I think that has the same look, but that's the same. This, this, and this are identical to the ones where I've built my base. So it's not just we're limited in terms of the biomes in the game and the design of the biomes, but we're also limited in terms of the islands because... This is the same island setup. And open sea, ocean. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's open water in that direction. No islands. But if I go into the water and go down, you can see there's formations in the distance. But there's no major islands out there. So, yeah, we've got to be like... It's got to be some kind of inland sea or we're along the edge of an ocean. Of course, I guess it could just be a really, really big lake. Yeah, still nothing. I mean, a couple little boulders in that distance. Another one of those little island structures, which I think I've been to that one. And then that far end warehouse where if I was to go along this way, I go up the road. There's one to the left, one to the right. That's the one that I come all the way around to the right. Uh, I think that was one of the ones that had ramp blocks with it. So I've gone a good distance along the coast and still dealing with that. It seems to happen at times when I move downwards in elevation because it starts to float down and then it catches some current or something like that and does it. But yeah, I'm going to say... Outside of just the utility for moving uh, faster in an underwater setup so I can grab more supplies, uh, more oil, which I'm gathering up a good bit right now. There's no real utility of just driving off into the sunset in the water because at some point you're either going to run out of map or you're just going to run out of interesting stuff. Ah, uh, I can see the glow from the wrench at the little workshop gas station. So I have a beacon if I wish to find my way home. So I am back and, uh, oh, there goes my unauthorized farming. Okay, so I used up a good number of batteries. Not that many, though, in comparison to the total amount I have. And now that I'm back... That's how much I collected, plus that 20 there. So that's how much I collected. Granted, I didn't stop for every single geyser. I didn't stop for, like, all the single ones. But anytime there was, like, four or five sits like that, I definitely stopped. And this is what I already had. So I'm going to toss a bunch in. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I have an overflow. So I guess I'm going to put them here because this is the first one in the chain. So it should automatically pull from that before it pulls from the next one. And I'm going to make a lot of gas. Oh yeah, 802. That should get me plenty of fuel for a little while. I'm going to use this though to enclose that area so it only has that small gap. And so if I turn it on and we go up, wrong way, wrong way. There we go. Let's speed it up a little bit. There we go. So it adds some more weight to the back. And 
It will also be a case that I put some globe in there. I do this. It closes over the globe, and hopefully the globe won't go flying outside of it. If it does, oh well, I added a little bit more weight to the thing. This also won't have any effect on if I have to use the lift. So it'll still be something I have to remember to bring them up. But before, and that may be a factor of me being above water now, but before they were flipping out doing stuff like that. I go here and do this and they go flying on top of everything. So that looks like it is going to help. And one more finishing touch. Rubber ducky. That's important. This is my rubber ducky for when I go out in the water. You know, keeps me keeps me feeling safe. So with the base better organized now, I'm able to find a little bit of my stuff better. Mainly the construction stuff, stuff that I'm bringing in when I collect it. Building items are still kind of hard to find, but at least I know which ones to go through. Just that little group. The rest, all the color-coded ones over here, are for items that I know what they are, what, what kind of item it is. And that has opened this up so much more. So I just built this new vehicle here uh, for this video and did all my building right here on the new base platform. Didn't do anything over there at the old base location built it all here tested it all around this area yes not as easy to get up from the water but in most cases i'm not actually going to be building stuff that's going to go down into the water when it's up here i'm going to be building something that's going to go over on the land and if it's big enough i'm going to build it over there anyway but this is working out fine uh granted i mean i could have done a lot of this at the other location with the organization and everything but I still didn't have the security at the other location for my farm. And here I have my farm. I have my constant water pump going. So I don't have to worry about running out of water for the farm. And that makes all the difference. I can produce tons of goods from the farm without having to worry about getting attacked. All right, that's it for this episode of Scrap Mechanic. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what tricks you've used for keeping your vehicles on the uh, you know, ocean sea floor when you're making an underwater vehicle. Love to hear what you've done with it. And of course, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week and I'll see you in the next video.